This video focuses on brushes, more specifically to uh, newcomers and how they can start to set up a scene where they can practice different types of brushes and explore the options. Uh, and also if they're bumping into problems, how they can alleviate that and just get back to, to sculpting and discovering. We want to get ZBrush to a stage where we can start sculpting on a mesh and basically get used to using brushes and how they work out. Unfortunately, there's a couple of steps you have to do, um, a lot of barriers until you can get to that stage. So we're just gonna go for those first and then start to look into things like uh, the brushes. So the first thing you'll probably be introduced to with is this drop down menu. Um, if you're pressing comma, that's gonna get rid of it. Just make sure I'm activated, get rid of comma. Um, up in the top left, this is where we're focusing on today, which is the brushes. As you can see, it's grayed out, which is kind of frustrating. This is because there's no object in the scene. We can't paint on anything. Uh, so to get that started, if you come to the top right under the tool section, you've got a selection of objects. I'm gonna start with a sphere just because it's something nice to work on. Um, upon clicking this, you can choose which one you want. I'm gonna choose this sphere, have that selected. This is now activated uh, on, my, on my clicker. So once I click and drag down, it's gonna draw this mesh into what's called the canvas. So our kind of like working area. Now, um, I wouldn't be pressing anything just yet because it's by chance, uh, if you do, you're gonna start drawing all of these individual tools across the canvas and we won't be able to sculpt on them. So if that does happen, um, what you want to be doing is pressing Control N and what that's gonna do is do something called clearing the canvas. So once you've cleared the canvas, we can start by doing the full process of drawing something out and then changing our sculpting mode to edit. So it's this button up here, which is also the shortcut of T. So <clears throat> whenever you're starting out with a sphere, you want to be drawing it out and then pressing T instantly. So you're not drawing all over the canvas. Um, the next stage, our, our standard brushes are, are open. So you think that we can start it? No, we can't. We have to enable sculpting. So it's a, right now it's a 3D primitive. It has a couple of like 3D options that we can change. We're not interested in that side of their brush just yet. Um, so what we want to do is to make this sculptable, we come up to some a button called Make Poly Mesh 3D. So once we click that, you can probably notice that this uh, this tool, this new tool that we've had, has created uh, another sphere on which we can start to sculpt on. So now that we click on top of the mesh, you can see that it's starting to, to draw. Um, if I want to undo that or bring it back, I can do the simple control Z's. Now, what I'd suggest is getting used to movement controls. So there's another video on that. So if you're not used to movement controls, it might make sculpting a little bit difficult. Um, so what we've got, the layout with the Z brush is in the top left, we have the brush that is selected. So with the start, it starts with um, standard. When you draw on, it's gonna add or draw out some geometry. If we hold Alt, it's gonna do the opposite and it's going to cave in. So you can start to see how we build up objects by just pulling and pushing um, clay back, in, back into the object. There's a couple of settings with the brush. So in the top, you can see there's something called Z intensity. The intensity is basically how, uh, think about how strong it's gonna be. Uh, I've also got different pen pressures here, but as standard, it's gonna be almost twice as strong as, as we had before. Um, you've also got things like the draw size, so the actual size of the brush. Uh, again, this is gonna work for both methods. A better way of doing this is if you hold space, it's gonna bring up a, a nice quick menu. Um, the advantage of this is depending on where your mouse is, it's always gonna have access to draw size, focal shift and things like that. Um, alternatively, you could use the square brackets. That's sometimes quite nice to change the size of the brush. That can be quite useful. Um, what you'll see is the mesh is starting to get a bit jaggedy. If we hold shift and look into the top left, what you'll find is that the brush is actually changing or toggling while I hold the shift to a brush called smooth. Um, what smooth is gonna do is uh, gonna smooth the mesh. It's gonna get rid of any sort of like jagged edges. Um, so when you're developing uh, and making meshes, what you'll do is you'll be you'll be going around applying some uh, some clay and some edits and then using the smooth to kind of like push it back in. Again, you can switch that up with the size, uh, the size of the brush. So a smaller smooth, you can be more tactical with your smooths. So I'm just gonna bring it back all the way to uh, the start. 
up here we've got a slider for the history so if you want to be playing around a lot you're probably going to make loads of brush changes and then you can bring it back to the start just to experiment with some new brushes um, one thing I do like to do as well is change the material type because it's a bit distracting with the red if you click on here you get a selection of options for material I like to use the basic material just so you can see a nice shadow and see what effect your brushes are having um, so there are more brushes in ZBrush, they all have different options which we'll go through. So standard is uh, used quite a lot, I'd say it's used about 30% of the time if you're if you're in industry and kind of used to that. Um, big selection of brushes, what I suggest doing is going through them and understanding each individual one. We'll take an example and a common brush, uh, for example clay. So once I click on clay you can see the settings have changed and now the properties of the brush itself um, have adapted so clay's clay's one of these things where it sort of uh, fills in gaps and then adds and builds up different amounts of of geometry what you'll probably find is if you start to add a bit too much we're getting rid of um, some we're, ha we're having some topology break and that's down to the resolution of the sphere itself if you imagine um, like inflating a, a, a net or something it's not going to be able to support itself one way around that is if we go into geometry in the geometry tab under tools we can do something called divide so what it's going to do is going to put more resolution into the mesh so when we do those major major changes um, the mesh can support those one thing to know is if I'm smoothing the smoothing is going to be less effective because there's more geometry here so there's less that's um, that's being moved another brush we can look at is um, clay buildup so clay buildup is similar to clay, but in this time its primary purpose is to actually like uh, make some mass. That's a very useful one. That's also probably the third common one that I use. One thing to note is that you've had a couple of settings that have changed over here depending on the brush. So the brush itself is comprised of a couple of things. So it's comprised of settings that you'd find in brush, uh, stroke and alpha. I wouldn't go into those just yet, so if you're an advanced user you can start to delve into that. But the main brush is comprised of those settings. Um, under here what we have is the application method, so right now we have freehand, so it's very easy to do with our graphics tablet. Um, we can, for example, click on this and change that to something like a, a drag rectangle. So what a drag rectangle is going to do is just going to draw out one individual shape. Um, which leads us on to the alpha. So the application of this brush is derived from um, something called an alpha, which is basically the area that the, um, the, the the clay is applied. So for example, if we're dragging out one, one bit of alpha like that, you can see it brings the shape. We can change the alpha by clicking on it and change something like uh, something more spherical and you can see the effect. Um, we'll just increase the intensity here so you can see it. Uh, it also affects depending on if you're going on freehand instead of a more squared application like we had here for building up clay it's now a softer a softer fallout so you're more than welcome to adapt those settings just to fine tune your brush to to make it react how you like but fundamentally the um, the basic ones are, are fine enough if at any time you go too far deep into editing things um, you can come into the brush settings and to reset the brushes back to the default you can come down to here and it says reset all brushes um, so that's going to bring back the default clay build up brush um, it's put me back to the standard brush now if I wanted a quick method to get back to that clay brush the clay build up brush you're using um, I can start to use hotkeys which are much much faster way of using brushes so if I press B it brings up the brushes menu um, and then now I can start to think about the natural progression for selecting clay so a clay build up brush might be C for clay so now I press C on the hotkey that's going to show me all the brushes that begin with a C and they have a corresponding kind of letter next to them um, and then I know that L is going to bring clay up so C L for clay uh, maybe the standard brush if I want to get back to that I'm going to be pressing B and then S for standard and then T so standard you'll get used to it and you'll get to understand um, that's a much quicker way of, of selecting things instead of coming up here tapping on it and then starting to to draw things 
Um, you might find that all these brushes aren't necessarily interacting how you think a brush would be. So one similar one, if we have chisel, you'll see there's a little number uh, across here. This basically brings up some different settings. So within that brush, we have some different um, applications. So for example, this is quite a, a nice chisel. Um, we can come in and change the different fall offs and the different patterns that it gives to it. I would avoid using for the time being anything to do with sort of like hair. So groom hair balls, that's not to do with sculpting. Um, any sort of curves or quads that you're changing or any sort of Z modeling things. These aren't the basic brushes like you would use or make um, a clay object in real life. They're more, more technicals that you'll come on to later. Um, another really useful brush is the trim, trim dynamic brush. So if we come in here, brushes, we can go to T and then I'm just going to use the trim dynamic. This is basically going to cut off um, certain parts of the mesh and it's really useful for starting to make certain shapes. You know, after this, we can start to smooth it um, and come around the back. Another feature that you might want to get involved in uh, is the dam standard, which is more of an, an etching, an etching brush. So if I go to D and then there's something called dam standard, so it's D BDS. This is going to give a nice um, kind of like divot. It's, it's good for putting details in. Um, and then obviously we can smooth it off. If I'm clicking and holding uh, and I want to draw a straight line, I can click and hold, hold shift, and it's going to bring up this arrow. I can then let go of shift and then it's going to draw a straight line. So that can be useful for um, doing the edges of surfaces and, and things like that. If at any point you want to be a bit more smooth with your detailing, so uh, maybe if I'm writing my name or doing some de details, it's purely dependent on how accurate my my drawing is. So if I'm you know if I'm a bit shaky, it's going to be wobbly. Um, one way you can counter that is use something called uh, Lazy Mouse. So under Strokes, uh, the Strokes menu here, and then if we click this little button, it's going to dock it to the side where we can use it. Um, and then under we've got some some options which uh, change the brush settings. Again, you don't have to go into it. It doesn't doesn't make the artist these sort of settings. Uh, and but under lazy mouse is a useful feature. So lazy mouse is already toggled on. So it's just uh, a feature of this damn standard brush. Uh, and then what we're looking at is lazy radius. So if we're increasing the radius uh, under lazy radius, you'll see that whenever you click you get given this elastic band and it only really starts drawing at the maximum um, tension of that band. So a byproduct of all this is that you can really make um, smooth transitions of your brush and it's going to basically alleviate any um, shaking that you've got. So if you increase that to the maximum, obviously it's going to be really long before you can uh, trail this piece of string and start to draw lots and lots of details.